Welcome, everybody, to the Think Different Podcast. We have returned after a couple-week hiatus because stuff just happens. But I'm so glad that you are back here to join us every time we have a podcast. We appreciate it. We also appreciate the love on our YouTube channel. I mean, think about it, Frank. We are, like, very close to where we can actually make money on that channel. All we need is about, like, 500 more subscribers, and we could do it. And we're getting new ones every day. And thanks to this man who made the best numbers video on the planet because it's the number one trending video on Apple Numbers. That's that man Frank right there, enriching lives. But we appreciate you joining us all the time here for us. My name is Will TLD, of course, the former Apple specialist and creative. And along with me, of course, is the man I've already kind of introduced, but introduce it again. He is the former Apple creative, retired book publisher, soccer mom recorder, Jurassic Park owner, black coffee drinker, Gerald number 12, retirement home president, the keto trout drummer himself, Mr. Frank Fox. Hey, everybody. Hey. <laughs> welcome, 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 everybody. It's so, see, isn't it so good? I mean, at one point, the opening of this show might literally take me three minutes to do <laughs> just to get all the stuff about you. You know, I, I was looking at some of the reviews on the uh, YouTube of the uh, numbers video, and there was only one that was kind of neutral. Everybody else really liked it. There was one that was just just said yawn. And yes. I was like, hmm. and I responded to that. So I don't know if you saw the response to that uh, on that video, but I did leave a little response. Now, it was a, I was a very oh, now you have to make me now I have to look it up. Right. And now you got to you got to cover for me now. Oh, well, now I know what I, I did look at it. So I know what it says. It says if you think you can do something better, you're more than willing to we're more than willing to have you do do a video. Yep, that's right. Um, and I'm sure I didn't get a response for that. No, uh, but we but right now for us, for being, you know, no advertising or anything to have 580 subscribers. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You know, and people love our content. They keep adding it. Uh, they keep looking at it. So honestly, I can't complain at all no, uh, no. Uh, you know so uh, pretty proud of that uh but yeah watch the other videos that we got folks we have more than just those two okay uh but anyway i wanted to give you some breaking 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 news because i this week purchased a new iphone 13 pro and a 16 inch max macbook pro Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Man, butterflies came out of your wallet, huh? Living the rich life, baby. Wow. Yeah. You know um, how many you know how many Zevias I have to drink for that? Not sponsored, <laughs> of course. Woo. All gotta, right. So I gotta throw out liquor in it. Now, here's the question though, Frank. I'm gonna give you the million dollar question. Of course, I did not buy this full price. They finally went on the old school EPP, baby. How much do you think I spent on those items? Well, now you got the iPhone 13 Pro now, Max. I'll, yeah, so let me let me give you the specs so you that way you have an idea. I want, I want you looking it up now. All right, I want you all to right. do this the right way. So I bought an iPhone 13 Pro 512, and I bought a 16 inch MacBook Pro with a, uh, a, a M1 Max chip, 32 core, 10 core CPU, 32 GPU, 16 core engine. 32 gigs of unified memory and four terabytes of SSD storage, and I included Apple Care on both of them. Four terabytes yeah. of internal storage. That's right. Whoa, that mm. you're talking big bucks there, buddy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you, baby. You're topping <laughs> out on that alone. So almost three grand. So well, yeah, that alone. Yeah. Well, remember, there's an eight terabyte is the highest you could do. So yeah, but still. So, what do you think the final total is? I gotta, I gotta think you're about thirty-five to four thousand. Uh, that's it. Oh well, you, <laughs> just, just you said don't look it up, so I'm not looking it up. I'm just taking a guess. So this is a, uh, the total is five thousand seven hundred and ninety-six dollars for the all those items. And you, and you got it through EPP as well. That's right. Whew. Now, if I didn't have it through EPP, I actually looked that up ahead of time. If I would have bought all that full price, it would have been $6,819.74. Yeah. Well, did you get it yet? 
Well, it's uh, it's been ordered. I'm waiting for it to arrive. Now, I did use my Apple card. Uh, okay, it turns so out, it, so I used the physical card, uh, right. which I was allowed to get the three percent back. Uh, so I found that out. I was wondering if I'd use Apple Pay or use the card, but I will get the three percent back. It's roughly, I think, around a hundred and forty dollars or something like that. I'm going to get back an Apple Cash. That's good. And I also am going to trade, if I trade in everything uh, that I have right now, the estimated value that I would get is $1,090 for my computer and my 11 Pro. And now you're trading that in through Apple. Oh, you're through Apple. Now, I can tell you right now, the computer I own right now, uh, this week, actually, while we have not been recording, my battery came up with service battery on it. So Uh-oh. now, so yep, so the battery. Oh, it was a must, huh? Oh yeah. So, it, it, but the computer's been doing little things to the point that I this had to happen. Like I had mm-hmm. to do mm-hmm. this. So and now so even Tim more released so, this new stuff right on right on schedule with you. Yes, it, it was perfect timing uh, for this to happen. And so really, I'm gonna get about a thousand dollars back plus the one forty. I'm gonna get back. So really, you're looking at what? Uh, Four thousand. Yeah, you're uh, about what I said. Yeah, yeah, but that's for trade-ins and all that. You were account all that stuff. Hey, you know, still a good guess. So. Now, have you priced your buyback through Buy My Mac back or whatever? Yes, that... uh, I actually spoke to the owner of SellYourMac.com. I talked to Brian, which we have an interview mm-hmm. in our archives of talking to Brian. Um, Brian tried everything he could, but he just couldn't beat Apple's price. Uh, wow. Remember the idea; he's trying to resell these products, folks. Right, That's, right, right. You know, exactly. Apple Apple could technically use all these for parts. It could, it could use it for other things too, and not just. For right. that, so uh, that's where I think the value comes into doing it with Apple. They were definitely the best option. Not so much on the iPhone. I think I could sell the iPhone for a little more. We'll see about that one. Uh, but also, I look at ease the ease of use for me. Sure. Yeah, you just know, take it in, and there it is. Take done. it in. Boom, yeah, boom, you're done. In fact, the day I ordered the device, I ordered about eleven thirty in the morning. When I got home, there was already a box. Actually, it's right here. I put it on YouTube. The box is already here to ship back my old stuff. Wow, that's a, that, that's how quick it took. The, at eleven thirty in the morning, by the time it was five, six o'clock, I got home. This box was here. So where did you go? Did you go to Quaker Bridge? You go to Freehold? I did uh, online because now that EPP is allowed to be done at home, you don't have to be in the store to do EPP anymore. So now they can go at home and do well, it. How in the did house. you get EPP? Not being an employee. I, I talked to a man named oh. the Zoop Zoop Zoop. So. Man, see, I these guys connected. like, I, they like it when I go into people store. People love, they... people love TLD. Oh, in fact, I actually wrestled since that time, the last episode we had. I was in the ring for about 10 seconds and I went out. But, you know, I did my best <laughs> that I could do. But my son got to watch me wrestle, sort of. Oh. So that was the joy. I got to talk to one of these guys to see if they'll. Uh... Oh, and might I mention, if you go to ECWA on YouTube and you're going to do this on that day, we're going to watch my. Uh, I'm going to be in a match called the Turkey Bowl on Thanksgiving Day. Live on oh, YouTube. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Live on YouTube. Yeah. So All right. get ready to enjoy some turkey and some TLD. Wow. Yeah. So a lot of stuff That's happened good. since the last couple of times, right? Yeah. All right. Well, wow. So, so you got the 16 inch mm-hmm. max. Wow. Mm-hmm. Now, let me ask you, because I was considering, well, as you know, I have the 27 inch here, right? Mm-hmm. Would you consider waiting to see if they do something with the IMAX? No, because or... I need a portable device. No, no, no. I know. I know. Not you, but I mean like me. Oh, you. Um... Or would I, or would you go with the 14? Well, if you're okay with have, if you have a good monitor with a webcam built into it, or, you know, then really, what does it matter? You know, at that point, I mean, I think a 27 inch would be too expensive for you. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to, I think right now, knowing how expensive the Macs are now with the 24s. Yeah. I think you're going to be, you're going to get a little bit of a hit. 
I don't know, and it might be worth it for two thousand dollars and the portability feature built into it, just to get a uh, you, you don't and you need the smallest pro. You the only thing you need to do is decide on the storage, but you need the smallest. So you you pro. would say the fourteen inch. Yes. Go with the fourteen inch, and I was thinking five twelve. Yeah. Yeah, that would be. I think that's perfect for you. The space is the only thing you have to be concerned with. Yeah, and then like I have everything external... else that's in that thing. It doesn't matter, and you can use an external monitor. Well, I don't. I don't. I mean, I don't have an external monitor. I mean, what's wrong with? What's wrong with the the screen on the fourteen inch? Nothing. But if you want that wider, if you want that big screen oh. experience, that's what I I'm see. talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well. Well, I can always do airplay. That you could. Um, I, there's a lag in that, but I, I. But sure, you could do that. In fact, the five twelve is the starting storage price. So really, you're paying two thousand dollars for that laptop, and then whatever how much you could buy a cheap TV, uh, if you want. Like I said, if you want that super dis, yeah. uh, uh, display experience. So, yeah. I mean, honestly, and right now I think looking at Max now, I'm looking at the price of an iMac. Let's see here. If you want something pretty comparable, I mean, none of them are comparable. I mean, it's twenty four inch. I mean, it's a pretty decent size. But I mean, if you're, Apple should go to thirty at this point. I don't think uh, twenty seven that three inches is going to make or break people from buying it, unless it has the chip inside, which is the big thing. Yeah. So, like right now, it's sixteen ninety nine for a five twelve storage with an M one chip iMac. In so, but that's only in the twenty one. No, well, it's twenty four now. Remember that. It's not 21 inch anymore. It's 24. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, 24. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, th so think about it. You know, obviously the pro I think is and, and the, the superb. Back, I cannot wait to get it. It's gonna be a few weeks before I get it, but I will definitely be up here talking about it. I can't wait for that. Uh, unfortunately, with the 13 pro, uh, the 13, I won't have a wedding for at least another month before I get the phone. So I really can't say how it's gonna work in my work environment. You know, I, I already seen it in action right now with my sister having it. It looks great, but I want to well, see it when I actually have to film stuff. That well, to me listen, is... listen, I, you know, um, my grandson's been playing football. And I've been in the stands filming uh, plays that he's in on. Mm -hmm. And I mean, <laughs> I, I can't believe how sharp. Now I'm all the way up in the stands and zoom in. And using and the 12, everybody. Using that. the 12. And it's. 12 pro but it i mean it is crystal clear i mean it i i can only imagine what the 13 is you know so yeah, i'm looking forward to it i'm really excited uh, to use it yeah uh, so that's our personal story a lot, a lot of stuff happened while we were gone so we're all getting it out right now but today you know we were going to talk about black friday because that was a big uh you know we, i like to find some stuff on the web that could really help you guys out but apple made a breaking announcement today that really has boggled the minds of every genius that works at an apple store right now yeah. and it makes guys like lewis rossman who's been begging this for for years finally kind of giving a uh you know a, a happy happy pat on the back to apple but what's going to happen is apple is going to allow parts tools and manuals starting with the iphone 12 and 13 to be available to individual consumers that's right that means that you are allowed to now repair your own devices in your home. Now, yeah, this is uh, let's get I some mean, let's get some backstory to it. There's yeah. a lot of things going on in Congress right now about right to repair. It's very well known that there's a movement happening that is backed up by the president, and that I think is going to pass at some point. That includes Xboxes, Playstations. But here's what I think is amazing about this. Even though people don't, even though they don't want people going into these devices and repairing them, think how much money they're going to make extra off this. Too. Like, you don't, like, they just. Well, see, you mean selling the tools and the parts? They selling the tools, the parts. They don't have to have as much labor anymore because of that, which saves them money. Well, see, I, I so, disagree with that. All right, that's um, fine. I'm just telling you from what I, how I think they will benefit from it. Now, do I think it's right? Well, we're going to talk about it. So let's talk about, we're going to actually go through the entire thing. So on your screen right now is exactly what this repair is about. So we're going to go through it and we'll stop in between and talk. 
So today, Apple announced self a self-service repair, which will allow customers who are comfortable with completing their own repairs access to Apple Genuine parts and tools. First available for the 12 and the 13 lineups, soon to be followed by Mac computers featuring M1 chips, self-service repair will be available early next year in the U.S. and expand to additional countries through 2022. Customers join more than 5,000 Apple authorized service providers and 28,000 uh, 2,800. Wow. Let me do that again. Customers join about 5,000 uh, and 2,800 re independent repair providers who have access to these tools, parts, and manuals. The initial phase of the program will focus on the most commonly serviced modules, such as display, battery, camera. The ability for additional repairs will be available next year. There's a couple things about this that were brought up, and I, and I watched a couple videos today. You know, and of course, I was very curious what Lewis had, Lewis Rossman had to say because he's obviously been the active. You know, he's been like the anti Apple guy on repair forever. One thing he brought up was that these twenty eight hundred repair shops, like one of the things he said, reason why he didn't join it when he found out was they are actually Apple. What they do is that you have to if someone comes in with a broken display, they have to order the display based on the. That means they can't leave the phone that day. Um, they have to order it, wait for it to come to them. Uh, they don't have them in stock just to just to start putting them together. Also, Apple audits them and makes sure that if there's any other business practice that they're doing that's against their rules, they are automatically out of the program. So they really are confined to what Apple tells them to do. Oh. Well, all right, so that's independent shop. That means that means they can't order. Like maybe they can't order boards from certain manufacturers or something like that. Oh, do you consider that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, he get like Lewis is a perfect example where he gets those parts, and he's probably not supposed to be getting those parts. Right. Okay. Right. So he's getting because when he mentioned in the video, he mentioned I'm not explaining how I get them. Well, that means you're doing something shady, right. you know, right. and that that's right. the honest truth. Or he has a, or he has a connection in in house that that's getting him these parts that he's not supposed to have that probably other independent shops don't get. Now, you know? uh, my my position on this uh, is is very simple. Uh, one, if you have the wherewithal, the knowledge, and um, and you want to try to repair your device yourself, okay, that's me. I could do it. Oh, well, that's be yes, because you've had the training and stuff like that. Right. However, and Apple, we're... by the way, Apple does say who are comfortable in completing. So they're not saying that you, you know, they're not saying this is for everybody. Right. Let's, let's get that straight. They're not saying, oh, if you have no experience, you should do this. You know, right. you need to have technical experience to know how to do this. Because what's going to happen? Somebody's going to, they're going to, they're going to buy the tools. They're going right. to get the parts. They're going to take it apart. And then it's going to be all fucked up. Right. Okay. All you need is a thermal event to happen with a battery. And, and then, then what do they do? Now they're going to take it back to Apple and Apple's going to go, Hey dude, you, you, you opened it. You took that on yourself. There's nothing we can do now. Well, we don't know the rules yet, so well, let's that's, not just... that's true, but right. but you know, prior to this, anytime uh somebody took their phone or device to a third party vendor, then Apple would be hands off. Right. Now, for me, I think the average consumer most of them buy the Apple protection plan. Let's Absolutely. Just, which, which right away, you should not be doing this if you have an Apple care protection plan. Right. Because you're, you're put to me, you're paying a premium for that. Yes. So why and would if, you do that? If you, most, the Apple protection plan covers two to three years, mm -hmm. two years on the phone. Three now, and three years on a Mac, which because remember Macs are going to be part of this. Right. So if you factor the price of that per day, and come up with a number because it's like 249 for the phone for for two years with, that covers loss and um theft. if you do if you do loss right and then if you divide that by the two years you come up with a price per day right now you're gonna say well you know what I, i'm gonna try to repair this why would you do that for do dollars on the day mm -hmm. it just doesn't make any sense to me mm -hmm. and run the risk of it not working 
when all you need to do is take it, either mail it in. You saw how you just showed us how fast you got the box for you to send your equipment back. It's a simple process. And from a consumer point of view, if I give that to Apple to fix and I have a problem with it, I just go back to Apple. Right. That, that was, was, a, that was the, a point. That was a point I was about to make was exactly that. You know, I mean, I've always considered that a benefit. You know, it's like, yeah, I you could take it to the mall and have them repair the screen. I have a perfect example. When I bought my first Mac, uh, um, Quaker Bridge was not here at the time. So I took it to an authorized service dealer in Princeton. And he charged me $150. Hmm. Now, I was new to Mac and I didn't really um, read the contract and stuff where I should not have paid him anything because that was covered under the Apple protection plan. So to me, a lot of these service providers, these third party service providers um, are going to use this as another means to charge somebody, the unbeknownst consumer, a fee for looking at the product and saying, oh, it's going to cost you this and the rest of the parts are going to be covered. So they're, they're actually double dipping. I was at several uh, phone carriers and their people there were telling people that had problems with the phone. Oh, it's going to cost you this for us to take a look at it and this and that. And they left and I went outside. And I told them, I said, hey, take your phone to the Apple store. It'll never cost you anything to have them diagnose the phone. Right. And then they'll tell you what you need to do from there and whether or not it's going to cost you any money. So now, I, me, uh, mm -hmm. I would prefer taking it to an Apple store or sending it into Apple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, if you mess up your own repair, uh, you know the only person that could be responsible is yourself. Uh, you know, so that's that's the point you're making with that. Right. Uh, let's let's get back to uh, a little bit more of the article. To ensure customer can safely perform the repair, it's important they review the repair manual. Then a customer will place an order for an Apple Genuine Parts using the Apple Self-Service Repair Online Store. Ooh, another online store. Following the repair, customers who use their used part for recycling will receive a credit towards their purchase. The new store will offer more than 200 individual parts and tools enabling customers to complete the most common repairs of an iPhone 12 and 13. The app, uh, the self-service repair is intended for individual technicians with the knowledge and the experience to repair electronic devices. For the vast majority of customers visiting a professional repair provider with certified technicians who use genuine Apple parts is the safest and most reliable way to get a repair. So even in there, they have to, someone has to diagnose the, the device and then go to the store and order the part. So I don't know. If, no, you could do it online. Yes, but you're still going to have to wait for the part. Sure. Yeah. Now, the other argument is that you're not going to be able to repair other things like screens, batteries, and cameras. But what about charging ports? What about the motherboard? Mm -hmm. Um I don't think they're going to let people repair a motherboard. <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I don't see that happen. I don't think they're going to let them like do the charging port. Whatever Apple does in the store is what they're going to do at home. And another thing that again that guy Lewis man doesn't is a little shady on this, but I I believe he's right that Apple is not going to let them repair a motherboard. They're not going to let them repair the charging port. They're not going to let them repair the USB C um, maybe the USB C, depending. Uh, but I think, but like things like the uh, remember the M ones now have the battery removal option. The batteries can be removed. The tabs are there for the battery to come out. Which thank God Apple allowed that. So they, I think they prepped these pros for this exact reason because mm -hmm. they're saying M ones repairs. I think that includes IMAX too. So yeah. that means they got a VHB. They got to take the the VHB off the IMAX, which is going to be a whole other weird thing. Uh, but we don't know what Macs are going to be on there. They did say Macs. They didn't say which ones. Yeah. But so think about it. They're going to have the tools. So you, think about what you got to buy. you got to have to buy the, the, the mat because you have to be on a safety mat. Right. Uh, you know, you have, to, you have to put the electrostatic on your arm to make sure you don't fry the freaking board. 
Um, that part alone is going to cost you money. Plus all the little tools you can buy, which by the way, you can buy ones from iFixit and all that. Uh, but you know, if you don't use their genuine tools, they're probably going to say something about it or they'll probably know, which I don't know how they would know that. But, uh, but again, and the most important thing is that vast majority of customers visiting an app, a professional repair provider with certified technicians who use genuine Apple part is the safest and most reliable way to get a repair. That is number one. But think of someone like me. If, if family wanted me to repair their phones, I could now. I Are can you? make a little money on the side. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. 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 So that's true. That's true. So for, and Frank Funk, I, I want, I'm going to wait for the day that Frank is like the Apple store didn't have a display. Will, can you get, can you do the display for me? <laughs> so but this is uh so that is uh a little bit of the article there's more to it but honestly you can go read that it's, none of it's, it's really this important. is groundbreaking to say the least it is um yeah there's a bomb I, and by the way they're also going to give credit back by the way towards their purchase so that means that you're recycling you're not just throwing away the old one you're going to let it go back and you'll probably get like a credit toward which is nice right. yeah you, you know but I, but I don't think it's I know I, I I could be wrong you know but I don't think that this is going to benefit your average consumer. I, I think this is going to no, benefit. No, and, that, and, that, and it doesn't say it will. By the way, yeah, but, yeah, you know, that's yeah. not what this is for. Or if you have Apple Care, you definitely don't want to do this. There's no. Yeah. I would never repair my own. Maybe I could do the battery, um, just for convenience because you know it's a work device. I don't want to be without the device for like three to five business days. If right. they could send me the battery. I would absolutely do it. Yeah. No doubt about it. You know, I probably would still go to the Apple store to get a diagnostics done, even though we have it on Max mm -hmm. now. They have mm -hmm. a little bit better diagnostic. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's going to be a double-edged sword. The, mm -hmm. the It's going to be a niche audience. Um, yes. And I think there's going to be, you know, people like yourself who, who view this as, hey, maybe I, you know, I can make a little cottage industry. And, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you know, you, you're already – have a, a videography job you have your normal job now you're going to have another job then you got you might as well take up law because you're going to need a divorce attorney <laughs> oh <laughs> you hear that tara <laughs> so i wanted but, to yeah i wanted to show a couple of the responses from the community uh just so you could see what people said Fix it says it's a joint responsibility and for the last few decades too many manufacturers have been sure there's a shirking. What the heck does that say? Shirking. Yes, you're shirking right. theirs. They stopped selling parts. They sent lawyers after the folks like Tim Hicks, an Australian kid who just wanted to re share repair manuals with his friends. Apple's announcement may have seemed like a small thing, but they're going to publish free manuals and sell parts to customers. But it is a total shift in perspective. It is an agreement that this is a partnership. We're on the Starship Earth together, cruising through the universe together. Oh, that sounds like a load of bullshit to me. And the, <laughs> and the Right to Repair, Repair Coalition says, Big cave by Apple, but the devil is in the details. This is far off the requirements of the right to repair, but proves that legislators... Whoa, where are you going? Uh, prove that legislators... Oh, I lost it now. <laughs> uh, proves that legislators are on the right track of making similar requirements more broadly. I Yeah. And then you, the U.S. Uh, prig, whatever, I don't even know what that is, but this is a huge milestone for the right to repair. One of the most visible opponents to, to repair access is reversing course, and Apple's move shows what, what the repair advocates have been asking, which was always possible. I mean, if you know, be careful what you ask for. Yeah, All right? it's true. It's true. I mean, to me. And again, I'm just speaking for There's myself. There's going to be a long and, agreement you're going to have to agree to, which, by the way, when that agreement comes out, we definitely have to read that on the air. Yeah. Because you need to know what you're repairing, because I guarantee you, you're going to be responsible for a lot of things when you mess up your phone, well, especially you know, like a battery repair on an iPhone. That is not easy to do. Yeah. And not to mention with the 13, you need a special apparatus to take it off because it's it's so strong that at Apple stores, you have to put it under a hot lamp for like a minute just to loosen the display up. So think of the amount of money you have to spend on parts mm -hmm. alone just to get it here. Or not parts, tools, just to get yeah, it here. I, you know, I mean, it, you know, the, 
You know what they're doing? They are responding to the government who is probably going to allow right repair to happen, and Apple is just beating it. Well, and 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 that way you could say, hey, we're offering the options for them to have that. I I, I don't know about the parts. Do they have to return them? I don't know. I'm assuming they like something like for the iPhone 13, they're gonna have to return a big heating apparatus that that, that heats it up, or are they just gonna tell you to use your hair dryer? I don't know. That's not an Apple way of doing things. Uh, I'm, my assumption is that you're going to return most of the tools. Well, you know, like you said, the, this contract is the details are going to come out and then right. people are going to start complaining that they have to follow these rules. Right. Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, um, you know, they, it's another example, in my opinion, they want to do it all, but they don't want to take accountability. If you want to repair a product that carries the Apple brand, you have to adhere to certain standards because that brand stands for something. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you don't want to adhere to their rules and regulations, then go buy an Android. Right. I, I, I mean, I, to me, in my world, it's just that simple. You know, right. there you go. That's a, that's a Frank Funk opinion, man. He had his black coffee today. So he's on fire. In case you didn't notice today. <laughs> Now, here to, to sum this up, the question is, do you think that this is a good thing or a bad thing? Straight up. Well, for who? I think it's going it, it, to it's going to be. Hey, 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 it's a great PR move. Look at yes. Apple stock today. Yeah, it, it jumped up like crazy because yep. of this announcement. Um, good for me. Good for us. I think for Apple in the short term, it's going to be a good thing. And I say the short term only because, like you said, it's going to give them good PR. I think in the long term, they're going to have a lot of headaches from people that say, well, I took this to so-and-so. They're the certified. Now it's it's worse than it was. Now what do I do? Right. Now, how does the Apple Store deal with that? Or not only the Apple Store, but Apple corporate. Isn't it great that I'm not working there anymore <laughs> when this is happening? Uh, that's what We talked about, we had a group chat today, and we both, all of us said, including Chris Ville, who was here on our last show, thank God we don't work there anymore because now we don't have to deal with that. Well, but, but don't you think that opens the door for that? Of course it does. I mean, honestly, I, you know what the rules are? Apple should tell them that they have to put a special shirt on that is an Apple shirt. Uh, for them to do the repair, and you have to take a picture of yourself doing it. Uh, you know. Well, well, you know when we and were you have at the Bridge, there was that guy that had that um, business. I, I think he was somewhere in Princeton. Computer tutor Ted, baby. And he would come in. He would he would charge a customer, bring the machine into Apple, pay for the repair. Right. Right. And then. Charged the customer, and he did nothing but bring the machine into into Apple. You got it. That's a smart businessman, everybody. Shady, so, so he didn't but have a smart to buy. Businessman. He didn't have to buy any tools. He didn't have to sign any contract. That's right. And yet, well, he did sign a contract technically with Apple. Well, but still, he didn't have to buy any special tools. He would just bring it into the Apple Store and right. tell the customer, his customer, that oh, it's going to take seven to ten days or. 14 days, whatever it would take. When it comes in, he would come in, pick it up, take it back to the customer. There you go. You know, one thing about these repairs too, and this is a point that, again, Lewis Grossman made, that, you know, if you have to get your keyboard fixed all by itself, you have to get the whole top case done, at least on older Macs. Right. Um, that's a little annoying. I could absolutely see why, why am I paying $300 for a top case when it's a $60 keyboard part? And that's the argument that a lot that he made, which is mm -hmm. true. I think Apple charges a lot for their stuff because they don't let you just take the display part. If if the bulb burned out inside the display, why can't you just take the bulb out and not the whole? Why do you have to do the whole display? If there's nothing wrong with the hinge, or why would I have to do that? You know, that's the point he's trying to make. Now, well, Apple's because not, some, sometimes Apple, when rather than chasing an electrical problem okay you say oh i think it's it's this and so you replace that and then that works for maybe two weeks or whatever and then something else goes wrong now you're back then you fix that and then this and then so on and so forth why not just i believe apple's point of view was 
hey, this is a sign that things are going to start happening down the line. Replace the whole thing. Boom. Wash your hands. Here you go. Have a good day. Yeah. It's fast. Yeah. It's easier. I think it's going to cost a little more. Yeah. But yeah. I think with the Mac, like, for example, for the, like, I think uh, on the Mac, they're going to let people change the, what I think is what they're going to do is the battery, the display. Uh, and I think like some of like the one port on the, like some of the ports are not connected to the logic board. I think they'll be changed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's really it. I, I don't think they're going to let them do everything. I don't think they're going to let them do a logic board repair. You know, it's Camera? funny. The, the fan, uh, well, that's part of the display. So that's, oh. I would say that's display. Uh, so, I mean, the teardown of the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro is pretty good. It's very old school. It's back to like the old school way. In fact, the fans are like the last part before the top case. So it takes a little bit more work to get to the fans. Uh, but my point is that I think they're going to let people do some things. iMac, I don't know. Uh, that one's going to be a little strange if they're going to let people do that. Well, uh, you got to take the front display off, right? Yeah, which is a VHB, which is really, yeah. It's uh, I mean, the wheel thing will cut that out pretty easily. So, but again, you could break your display if you don't do it correctly. So w- this will be, I'm very curious, but I think that the only reason they're doing this is because I think Congress at some point will pass this repair and then your PlayStation, your Xbox, any electronic product that you own is going to be allowed to be repairable and they're going to force people to sell the parts for it. I think Apple was just beating them to the punch and that Apple made the first stance against the uh, on the right to repair because in Europe they're already like at the point of legislation it was just going to happen they were going to be forced to do it so right. apple instead of apple being forced to do it they just did it themselves well and that's, i think that this kind of reminds me of uh when the phone company was one unit then they broke that up and now you you don't know who or you didn't know who i had to talk to because you had all these little components and this is kind of the same thing in my opinion it's just just stay out of it you don't yeah. need to do anything just if get apple care and go want, to the store and do it that's that's the bottom line if people want to buy an apple product then they buy into the into the whole philosophy well that why, philosophy's why changed, you, sir the philosophy's uh, changed now whether you like it or not yeah well, but like i said this is not for everybody this is not this is a very small niche market this is for the people who want to go do the repair themselves, especially if it's one that they don't need to wait for an Apple part to come to the store, drop off the, the you know, if they know somebody that could do it for them, great. But I can tell you right now, if I did a repair for somebody's phone, you bet your ass you're signing some kind of an agreement before I touch that phone. And yeah. that way you can't go after me. Even if yeah. your friend, that's why I probably won't even do the repairs because it's just too risky to do. Anyway, that's our episode this week. We had a lot to cover in this one week, but this is a uh, this was a was pretty story. heated topic, huh? Yeah, it is a heated yeah. topic. It is, you know, but it's a great topic. It was a great thing to talk about for this week. You know, we're getting ready for the holidays. You getting ready for Thanksgiving, Frank? Yeah, we're. Um, we think we may be heading to Florida for a bit, so. And he doesn't take us with us. How unfair! No. I'll take. We'll take Luke. <laughs> oh, tell him, that's fine. I don't know if my wife will let you take him, but I don't think know. so. You know, on, me on the other hand, be like, yeah, go ahead, I can Facetime him. You know, he's <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, uh, it's uh, ho- obviously next week is going to be uh, Black Friday, Thanksgiving. We're likely not going to be doing an episode next week, so we want you guys to enjoy the holidays, enjoy Thanksgiving, enjoy Definitely. Black Friday. Um, on our YouTube channel, I do plan when Apple reveals their discounts, just like I did last year, I'm probably going to come up here on Solo on our YouTube just to see what they came out with and discuss what the discounts are and if I think they're good or not. So, And I'll probably compare them to other discounts that are out there. So exciting stuff for the world. I can't wait to get all my new Apple crap. Uh, yeah. Apple, you're welcome. I spent like almost like six thousand dollars on you today. So there you go, man. There you go. And in response, the Merry stock Christmas shout out to today. me. Merry Christmas to me. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you very much. Enjoy your Thanksgiving. Have a great Black Friday. We will see you in two weeks. And and, and take care. And I love every single one of you. Peace out, everybody.